What's up everybody, NFX here with another tutorial. This tutorial I'm going to talk about the FL Studio Channel Arpeggiator. Um, an arpeggiator basically plays what's known as an arpeggio. And an arpeggio, in its technical sense, is where you take a chord and you play the chord, you play the notes in that chord in a sequence. Uh, for example, I might take a C major chord like this and play it instead of all three notes together, I'll play it in a sequence where I'll just play the notes going up upward like this. That's a an arpeggio. And a lot of instruments that are out there today take advantage of uh, the fact that an arpeggiator um, sounds kind of impressive when used properly and we'll, we'll hopefully see an example of that but uh, let me just kind of explain the, the, the details of it uh, first. What I've done is I've loaded a basic sound into um, a channel and it's a 3x oscillator sound um, and this particular patch is called baseline but I, I chose it just because it's got a very basic sound to it. And um, what you want to do uh, to access the FL Studio channel arpeggiator is click on the channel that you want to uh, work with and then make sure you go to the Funk tab, the Function tab, or the Function page on the Channel Settings window. Within that page you, you'll find a section in the middle called Arpeggiator. And you'll see some symbols right there which is basically the mode the arpeggio uh, direction um, you'll see some knobs and some other other things in there now when uh, when we're talking about an arpeggiator basically what that does is it plays the notes for you and I'm gonna demo it with a single note for now and we'll get to uh, multi notes a little bit later but I wanna really make sure everything uh, that I'm going to tell you is clear and by using a single note I think you'll be able to uh, pick it up quicker. The first thing I want to point out about, an arpe about the arpeggiator and actually this is about anything in FL Studio is that you, you uh, really need to be aware of the uh, information section that's directly under the menu. So where you see the file, edit, channels, view, options, tools, and help menu, there's this area under there, and it's very useful because almost anything that you hover the mouse over, uh, it gives you a hint and or a value as to what its function or purpose is. Uh, for example, if I hold it over this knob, you can see that it says arpeggio time, and if I change the value of this knob, you can see the number and they're actually changing. So this helps me to know uh, exactly what I'm setting everything to. And this works in just about any FL Studio generator or plugin. It may not work the same way in third party plugins, but it doesn't hurt to take a look over there and see uh, if, it, if, if you can find anything useful. And you'll get used to looking up there when you're setting your volumes and your panning and other, other things in FL Studio. But the reason why I wanted to point that out is because a lot of these settings we might want to uh, we, we might want to use that feature to set it. For example, the time. You know, it'd be very useful for us to know what our timing is going to be. But let's talk about the arpeggiator modes. Uh, with the arpeggiator, you have basically five modes. You have an up, a down, an up down bounce, an up down sticky, and a random mode. We're going to cover each one of those uh, in detail. Before we cover all of the modes, I just want to point out a few of the, the other features. I'm going to put the mode on up. And what up means is that the arpeggio is going to travel in an upward direction, meaning the notes are going to go higher than the first note that you, that you play. So if I was to play a C4 note, the arpeggio would go up. And the way it would work if I hold down the C4 is it would play the next note uh, 
in the arpeggio, which would be C5, and then it would play C6, and then so forth. Now the distance that it travels from that root note, from the first note you hold down, is this range parameter. So I have my range set to 3, which means it'll travel a max, a max distance of 3 octaves. The first octave is the octave that you use. So if I hold down C4, that's the first octave. It'll play C5, the second octave, and then it'll play C6, the third octave, and then it'll just repeat that cycle. So let's just see that in action. I'm going to hold down C4 and you'll see it's going to play C5 and C6 and then return to C4, play C5 and C6 over and over again. Okay, so that's the upward mode. Now the speed at which it's playing is this time knob that we looked at earlier. So I could change this down to, let's say, 1, and you'll see it'll play twice as fast now. And you could even go, you know, further down than that. Maybe I'll set it to 0, uh, 12. And you can see it plays very fast. Now I'm going to put it back to 2 because it's easy for us to see the uh, the basic flow of the notes and hear the flow of the notes as they're occurring um, much easier than if it was really fast. So while we're on the topic of the time knobs, since the gate knob's right next to it, let's talk about that. With the gate knob, what happens is the note will basically sustain less. If the gate knob is turned all the way up, you can hear the note actually holds quite a bit. If I turn the gate knob down, you can hear now it's very short, so it's almost like a blip. I could turn this really far down and we'll almost get a click noise because it won't play very much of the sound. So you can use that also to, to uh, get some really interesting sounds out of the arpeggiator. There's also a slide parameter. The slide parameter, instead of playing one note to the next, uh, or actually, instead of playing one note, releasing the note, playing the next note, releasing it, playing the next note, it'll slide between the notes. It'll slide from one note to the next, to the next, etc. So let's hear that. So there you hear the, the slide. Now the slide parameter will uh, only work with FL Studio generators. So if you're using it with some third-party uh, thing and it doesn't work, don't be alarmed. It's, it's, uh, it's just an FL Studio thing. Now I mentioned the, uh, the range parameter, and I just want to demo that real quick for you. If I set the range to 1 and I hold down um, a key, in this case I'm focused in here on C4, I'm going to hold C4 down. You can see it's only playing C4 over and over because it's only set to play within one octave. Two would give me C4 and C5, etc. And then I had it set to three, but we could go as high as six within the FL Studio arpeggiator. Next to the range knob, let me set this back to three. Next to the range knob is a repeat knob a repeat value rather, and this is how many times each note will repeat before moving to the next note. So I could set it to 3 for example and then I'll hold down C4 and you can see it played each note three times. Okay, Now below that we have the chord parameter and the chord parameter right now is set to none and when it's set to none it basically means it's just going to play whatever you're holding down. So if I'm holding down a C, it plays a C. I could hold down a D, etc. So whatever note I hold down, it just plays that note over and over. Now if I was to hold down a chord, uh, let's say a C major, you can see it just plays the C major chord 
from one octave to the next to the next within our, our, our preset range, and that's all it does. But you can also do some really cool things like actually set a chord, uh, like a major chord. And if I hold down C now, um, for those of you who don't know, a C major chord is the notes C, E, and G. And at the beginning of this tutorial, I held down that chord. But with the help of the arpeggiator, I don't have to hold down the chord for it to play uh, the arpeggio if I don't want to. What I can do is I can just hold down the C, and then it'll apply the major chord to it. So I'm going to hold down C, and then you're going to see what's going to happen is it's going to play C, E, G in the first octave. Then it's going to play C, E, G in the next octave, and so forth throughout our preset range. Now all I did was hold down this one key and it did all that work for me. So you can see now where it's starting to get interesting. And all of the uh, modes that you can pick for the chord don't fit on the screen unfortunately. But you've got your standard major, minor, some of these uh, other types in here triads, uh, minor sixth, and I don't know what all these things are. I'm not an expert on chords, but if you are, I'm sure this will make some sense to you. Um, but you can use these chords, but in addition to that, uh, off to the side is a section called scales, and unfortunately in this video you're only going to see the first few uh, scales in here, but you can actually pick a scale, and let's say I'm going to take a major scale, now the C major scale is all of the white keys on a keyboard. So it's C, D, E, F, G, A, B, and then C again. Um, now, even though it says chord here, I picked major scale, not major chord. So now when I hold down C, instead of playing C, E, G, C, E, G, it's going to just play all the notes in the scale and work its way through our defined range. and so forth. Um, so uh, you can do pretty cool things like that. Um, you know, in, 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 in a way you, you can even play like, a, if I set this some, to something lower, you can play kind of like maybe a bass line automatically by just holding down single keys and having it, uh, having it play. So I was just playing C, F, and G, but then the arpeggio was filling in those other notes. So in other words, I was playing, and then I was just letting the arpeggiator, etc. So there's a lot of uh, opportunity for some interesting uh, things to come out of the arpeggiator. Um, let's go back to the uh, the other modes though. There's a couple modes that, that are listed that I didn't talk about. One is called auto and auto sustain. With the auto sustain what will happen is if my range is set to 1 and I have auto sustain set and I hold down a note you can hear it sustains the note. Without that if I just had it on auto it attempts to arpeggiate the note. It just plays the note over and over. Now that might be useful uh, in some cases depending on what you want to accomplish because if you had it on auto sustain you could actually play a melody um, and as long as you're not holding down more than one note you can uh, you can just play normally. But then when you start holding down more than one note uh, if I hold down the C and then the G together, then the arpeggiator kicks in and starts going between the two notes. So that's what auto sustain does. And it really only ma uh, makes a difference if you're on, on, on a single range. Uh, and then auto, as I said, will just simply play the arpeggio no matter what. Um, now, we've looked at all of the settings that you can use uh, 
not talking about the specific modes here, the uh, the mode. So let's let's talk about that. We saw we've seen up. Let's look at down. That's the next mode. Okay, so this is the opposite of up. Instead of starting at C4 and working its way up, it starts at the highest note and works its way down. So it goes C6, C5, C4, C6, C5, C4 in this particular instance. Uh, next to that we have up-down, and this is up-down bounce. And what up-down bounce means is that it's going to go up and then just come straight back down without um, without pausing, I guess is the best way to say. In other words, it's going to go C4, C5, C6, C5, C4, C5, C6, C5, just back and forth between these between the high and low notes in in the in the range. Now the mode next to that's called up down sticky and the difference between this and the last mode is that what it'll do is when it gets to the high note or the low note in the range it'll repeat it so it'll go C4 C5 C6 and rather than coming back to C5 immediately it'll just go C6 again then C5 then C4 and rather than going back up to C5 it'll play C4 again back up to C5, etc. So it's sticky on the high and the low notes in the scale. And you can see how it hits the C6 twice. Now I'm holding down this note down here so you don't see it blinking, but it's also hitting the C4 twice in that particular mode. Then the mode next to that, and the last mode to talk about, is the random mode. And in that mode, it basically just picks any note within between the high and low notes in the range, including the high and low notes. So just pick any one of them and play them in a random order. That's all it does. Okay, so we've seen all the modes. Um, up down is one of the more interesting ones, so I'm going to leave it on that for the next part of this. Um, demonstration because this is the part where I, this is how I use the arpeggio probably the most and that's in auto mode with maybe a range of three um, but what I do is I utilize the auto mode to play the arpeggio based off rather than a single note which I've been using for demonstration based off a chord that I play. So I might hold down a C major and just for this demo I'm gonna scroll this over because I'm gonna work up here in the C5 uh, octave but I'm gonna hold down the C, the E, and the G and then you're gonna see it's gonna travel based on the chord I'm playing. Okay so the reason why I like this mode the best is because I don't need to use this chord parameter and program what chord I want it to play. I can just hold down the chord I want it to play. Etc. So whatever chord I hold down, it, it'll play notes within that chord up and down the range that I've set. Um, now, one of my favorite ways of using this, uh, and I have to demo this for you guys because uh, it it sounds impress it sounds very impressive, uh, really. And if you've seen um, one of my other um, tutorials, specifically the tutorial on the uh, Southern style um, Southern style uh, beat recipe, you'll have seen this particular. Uh, arpeggio in action. So let me go ahead and load that up just to give you a demonstration. Okay, so what I've done is I've loaded up basically a uh, a string, what is this, a sound font. This is a string sound font. And if I turn off the arpeggio and we listen to it, just your average violin, right? But when we turn on the arpeggio, 
arpeggio, and I've got it set uh, to a range of three, and it's up down bounce mode. And I'm going to hold down a chord. In this case, I'm holding down an A minor chord. And boy, it sounds like someone knows how to play the uh, violin pretty damn well, right? But all I'm doing is holding down a chord. Now in the song that I wanted to demo, you can see that the chord that I'm playing is actually five notes in that chord. And if I play this pattern, you're going to hear uh, what this particular arpeggio sounds like. So you can hear that, uh, to me, it sounds very impressive. And then if you want to hear this again in the context of the beat that it's put in, I'll, I'll go ahead and play a little piece of that for you. Here it comes again. So you can see that you can do some pretty impressive things without a lot of work or knowledge. I mean, all I really kn know how to do is put some notes in the chord, and the thing made made it sound like, uh, to me, very impressive. You know, very impressive. So, uh, that's the power of the arpeggio for me personally. But what you need to do is uh, experiment with things, you know. Try uh, different modes. Try different speeds. Uh, put different sounds in there. Do all, Go crazy with it. Just go crazy with it and try it out. Hopefully you'll find some uses for it and, uh, you know, get creative. Anyway, this is NFX saying I'll catch you guys in the next tutorial.